I don't, did you, I don't know, like, do you, there, she's out there. You're the Florida version of Sex in the City, JD. That's when I was smoking my cigar. <laughs> I feel like we've been going back and forth a little bit. And then I was in a complete and utter panic when I saw that storm. Oh, yeah. You I know was... what ha- that now let, let us tell you, it usually, it usually takes me an hour to get in, and it took me three. Oh, three hours. That was incredible. I mean, my jaw was just hanging open looking at that stuff. Like, wow, that was serious. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty intense. Ooh, I'll say. All, all the subways were closed. And I mean, a lot was. was I mean, on. when they showed the water rushing in that subway, uh, I was watching like watching it on CNN. And I was like, oh, I know. My God. Whew. It, was, it was pretty, pretty bizarre. Yeah, yeah, that was intense. And I'm from Florida. So that. <gasps> oh, that kind you're of from. Is, OK. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff is like normal for me. But now that I've been here in England for 10 years and I've been away from it, um to see it all it just it made it, everything come flooding back <laughs> literally that's so great that you can work there yeah my uh my my wife is from australia i'm from florida we met oh, great. Through, through my first podcast and then um uh we have a friend here that had a um, a business and my wife took a job with her uh so i ended up moving here <laughs> do you yeah. love it i love it there yeah, it's a, a you know culture shock. I've been here ten years and I still feel like the obnoxious American. Like that's never you'll never. Happen. They'll always make you yeah on some yeah. level. <laughs> yeah, and I go back home and people go, oh my god, I can't believe you you don't uh, you're not picking up the accent at all. I was like, I you was are not 40. picking up the accent. Was, yeah, it was forty when I moved here. <laughs> I'm not gonna <laughs> pick up an accent. <laughs> but I don't even hear a trace of New York in your accent. That's because my mother talks like this. She's from Brooklyn, and all of us uh, <laughs> tried not to talk like this. <laughs> I have friends from Long Island, and I always tease them and say, "My sister's sneakers." My exactly. Sister's sneakers. Yeah, <laughs> and my stepdad. My stepdad's from Long Island too, so he called me Warner. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, Warner. Yep, it's great. It's 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 uh, you know, it, it, you expect it in the states, don't you? A little bit of New York little valley from the west coast yeah you know, little hillbilly from the, from mississippi alabama over yeah. here it's the same thing there's so many different dialects over here that i know I, the dialect thing is you see our whole creative um uh team from uh, is from the uk uh, really yeah so you get to hear it a lot <laughs> I, I hear it all the time <laughs> so so let's talk about your uh um, esteemed career because I am uh, I'm, first of all I'm thrilled to have you you're you know you're the first uh, Broadway musician that we've had on the show and we are I, I'm really proud to say this you are our 50th episode so it's kind of a big deal <laughs> that is a big deal big deal man <laughs> um, it's a big and it's a first and it's a first all around but you were working what are you working on Radiant Baby um, I was working, I'm working on Radiant Baby because we're getting a, um, another production after all these years, um, at the, uh, Two River Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey, which is where a lot of shows started that actually came to Broadway. I mean, uh, Be More Chill started there and, um, just other plays start. Oh, my dog's looking out the window. Is it? Honey. Which one? Cooper or Lizzo? Lizzo. <laughs> Lizzo. That is an adorable dog. Yeah, that dog was, yeah, we got her from um, a shelter in Brattleboro, Vermont, so. Oh, yeah, that's a recent, a recent acquisition, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, basically, uh, we were in rehearsal to do a workshop and one of the actor's husbands came in and, uh, I mean, the actors coming in and said his, uh, his husband had COVID. Oh. So we had to shut down. That's yep. the protocol here. You shut down, That's it. you wait five days, you get tested right away. And then you get tested again before you come back. And uh, we came back, we finished. And then 
from that workshop, we they said we want to do the show again. So it's so great for me to revisit the show after 20 years. Isn't that Almost exciting? Like, Did it all yeah. come flooding back? Like everything? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we, we, were, we were given the opportunity, which you never are, to like fix things that we couldn't fix before. That's fun. You know, yeah, that, yeah that's that's nice that you're able to tweak, you know, and yeah. uh, because you've had 20 years to think about it. 20 years to think <laughs> about it and say, I, you know, most of us say, oh, I wish I would have fixed this, this and that. Yeah. But it's really good that now we're getting to fix some stuff. And Keith Herring, by the way, has become way more popular than he was before. You I can go in. Say, and, I know that name. You can buy T-shirts. You can buy, uh, you know, it's all about his right. life. Right. Um, and, you know, how he used how he used his AIDS diagnosis um, for social activism and, right. you know, community and, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Everything. That's, that's, yeah. That's an amazing thing to do first off. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it ends up kind of being a coup for you too. <laughs> right. It's, uh, exactly. It's huge. Now you, you've been, you've worked on a lot of different shows though, over the years. Did you see Lizzo back there? Where, Look, I yeah, my there, yes. Oh my God. So cute. I hope, I'm hoping my cats are upstairs. Oh, well, oh you have cats. You're I a cat too. Yeah. I've got big head okay. Bruce and uh, little Molly. And they're upstairs. It's actually, it's like, it was so unexpectedly warm today. Like I'm all, I hate summer over here because they don't have air conditioning. Right. So right. summers blow hard. Um, but we've had like such nice, cool days that I was lulled into thinking that we were getting an early autumn and then today, boom, 80. So I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. So they're upstairs without fans going and the skylights open, they're cool. How come they don't have air conditioning? The buildings were never built for it, you know? Oh, so, and they won't even, I mean, it's like, they know, they know. But they have them in the hotels. It's uh, more climate control, <laughs> you know? It's not not so much that it's blowing cold air. It's kind of, it's just, it's just uh, yeah, like a climate control thing. But the homes, they just, I don't, I think they don't feel like the expense is worth it because you only, you only have like maybe three weeks of summer, you know, three, three weeks where it's exceptionally warm. But I keep telling them, like, I'll preach it, you know, to, to the day is long. Like, you don't have to live like this. You don't yeah. have to live like this. You don't have to have a sweaty house. You don't have, it's like they put fans on and think that that works. They don't even have the rolling ones. They do that. We do. We, yeah. The rolling yeah. portable ones. And some of them, like you have to put ice cubes in, which is kind of funny. That's then it really cold air, or else it's really just a fan on wheels. But um, yeah, it's really primitive. It's really primitive and I hate it. I would rather go home to Florida in the summer just for the air conditioning. Like everybody, wow. oh, you don't go to Florida in July and August. Like, I would, <laughs> I totally would. <laughs> it's Wow. It's but uh, anyways, so you've worked on uh, other shows like, did I see, because I, of course, I was mercilessly scrolling your Instagram. I saw something about I, Tina. Um, no, that's because I read that book while I was working on Tina. Oh, okay. Le yeah, I wanted to um, read that. Yeah. And now I'm also reading, I don't know if you know, but she has a new one called uh, Happiness Becomes You. No, but I just watched and the documentary, I, Tina. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, and this this is really about her Buddhist practice, which is what's so freaky is that I've been a Buddhist for 34 years and I practice the same type of Buddhism as her. Oh my God, I didn't even know there was different kinds. That's interesting. Yeah, so like I chant the same chant that she chants. Uh, so when the show started and she starts out chanting in the show, if you ever saw What's Love Got to Do With Her, her friend yeah, yeah. gives her this chant. Yeah. That was so weird that the chant starts in the first measure of my score. And I was <sighs> like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> yeah that's awesome what made you um like well, well I, I wanted to go back even further and say do you find that it was uh harder like as an out lesbian to get work on Broadway because I feel like for an out gay man it's instant um <laughs> you know I, because it's funny that's really <laughs> funny um I just think that I I never wanted to go into it in any way, not being able to say, oh, you know, my my wife said that to me yesterday. Like, I just wanted it to be like a normal thing. Right, I didn't right. have, you know, and I was fortunate because the person that I first worked on Broadway for, she was a very good friend of mine and had music directed some of my musicals. And, and it came about, she was just talking to me saying, oh, I really need somebody who's 
who can be able to conduct, who can be able to go on stage, because in Jersey Boys, you have to go on stage, yes. Yes. who can play piano, who can sing, because at the time we were singing in the pit. And I said, hello, me. And she goes, would, <laughs> would, you, work, would you work as a sub? I said, of course, I'll do a sub gig while I'm composing. It's nice to come in and play this. So I never set out to work on Broadway as an associate conductor. And then what happened was she left. And they asked me, would you like the associate conductor position? And that was it. That was like, wow. so, yeah. So it was like, because I always thought of myself more as a composer and a music director, um, but not necessarily, I, I hadn't done it on Broadway yet. And then now I did that. I did Donna Summer and now I'm doing um, Tina, but I'm not associate conductor on Tina. I'm just re subbing and doing rehearsal piano because yeah. I have to concentrate on Finally, Radiant Baby coming Radiant back. Baby. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. That's, that's huge, though. That's huge. And Donna Summer, another another favorite. But Jersey. Well, that was like my life flashing before my eyes. Because when I first moved to New York, I was a disco piano bar player. I went into the piano bars. I put a drum machine down. And I was singing on the radio. Yeah. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, I made a 70s drink, uh, a 7 oh. and 7. I, oh my uh, god you know like we got to take it back a little bit and you know tina turner donna summer i thought what yeah just a standard 70s seven and seven seagram and seven so yeah. i love it what time is it there it must be like se seven right what time is it there it is uh quarter after six quarter after six yeah. okay i mean anytime's drink time anytime yeah it's britain that's true you know, it's britain there's a pub on every corner it's you know you drink anywhere but um, yeah, those, I got to say, uh, Donna Summer, like that was, I remember when I was growing up, well, I shouldn't say that. My parents always had the albums. So I always had right. like, the big can headphones, you know, with the curly cord. Yeah. In the Donna Summer over the and over curly and over again. cord. Oh yeah, God. the curly cord and the big cans. But I, um, I distinctly remember when, when CDs came out, this is, I'm yeah. dating myself here, but when CDs came out, that was one of the first, uh, you know, greatest hits, two CDs. Yep. Yeah, that was one of the first I had to get. And hearing that on CD was just, I mean, I just remember jacking it up in my condo and just hearing sounds that I never heard before, you know, and it was, it's incredible. It's just the music uh that era all of it is yeah uh, she was pretty special yeah, yeah so good so good and jersey boys was one of the first shows that i ever went to with my my mom my mother liked to go to live shows so she always took me to like we went to see diana ross in concert every year for my birthday wow yeah and she always managed to get like really good seats like third row first row you know one year rosie o'donnell was uh right in front of us and it was like it was oh crazy. my god yeah and i was too scared to say anything but it was it was really cool so we we went to like a lot of um you know like lot concerts live music concerts. right but jersey boys was the first one that we we went to like an actual you know show in florida at uh at the broward theater uh the big one the performing arts theater and we were both on our feet for the entire thing. It's so good. Every word. And that show taught me a lot of, um, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That show taught me so much. I just don't want to forget this because it, it ran for 11 years on Broadway. Yeah. And it was an example of why a show is a hit. It's not only the music, it's the book. And the book of that musical at the time was kind of outrageous because people were saying fuck every other word. Yeah. And it just, yeah, it wasn't. And the first person that says fuck is Mary Delgado, the person that he marries first. She goes, <laughs> you know, valley with an eye. If, if they don't like it, they can go fuck themselves. Right. And in the beginning, it was like a big deal for a woman to be the first one to say fuck. And, you know, and it was just, it was all planned every, every, place that was supposed to get laughter got the same laughter every night every line got the same applause it was just this example and master class in what a hit show is definitely and you know every word and right me it was this the story like you know my uncle was in a band growing up and you know so we everybody always talked about music all the time like I remember right. coming home from school when I was little little and walking in and the coasters were sitting, the four black guys sitting at my kitchen table with my- Wow. Yeah, Buster, all of them, like, you know? And it was like, wow. 
But, wait, were um, you in Miami? Uh, this was when I was up in New York. But and wait, I, were you in, did, are you from Miami? Near, nearby. Okay, because my sister lives in Cutler Bay, so I was just- I'm Oh, assuming. yeah, kind of. I mean, I was in um, like Fort Lauderdale. So- Oh, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, my mother's there now. She's yeah. in Sunrise, Sunrise, Florida. Yeah, yeah. We, um, yeah, so we always had music in the family, but I just, I think when I left Jersey Boys, I remember saying to my mother, I never knew the story behind them. Yeah. So like, I, I didn't, I didn't know all of that. I didn't know, I didn't know any of it. Um, yeah, the story, the story is pretty amazing. Yeah, and it was really mind blowing, but it's, you know, it was, it was the thing that I think seeing that, um, it made me start paying attention to musicals a lot yes. more than just seeing a clip on television or a clip on the internet or whatever. Like I really wanted to go and be and sit in the audience and take it all in. Like I, I worked in theater, but like South Florida little theater, you know? So, right. you know, we were doing butterflies are free and wait until dark and things like that. But, you know, and then one big musical a year, Sound of Music every year, Camelot every other year. Cause yeah, they um, want the, they want the ticket sales. Yeah. 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 The old Jewish ladies liked it, you know, and that was, that's the important thing. <laughs> a little steel magnolia is every now and then. I but love it. The musicals. Once I, I, um, you know, I, that I remember back then, like I got everybody into it. We went to go see things like Jelly's last jam. Right. Sunset Boulevard and all that. And, you know, and then when I came here, the West end, um, we first show I saw when we came here was Billy Elliot. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's just, great. Yeah. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. I just feel like it's such, um, it's such a thing when you walk into a, into a theater, you know, before anybody gets there and those lights come on and you just take it all in. And it's just a, a thing that never leaves you. You know? And every every night it's it's you know it's the same, but there anything could happen. The great thing about live theater that we've all missed during the pandemic is that sense that anything could happen. We're all good on Zoom. We're all good doing these things from remotely. But yeah. the truth is that whole live feeling that anything can happen is it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things I think that affected me, you know, of course not being able to go home, not being able to see family, not being able to see friends, that kind of thing, but knowing what was happening to right. Broadway was, you know, it was, it was tough, you know, like yeah. I, and I knew that they were going to try and find funding and keep things going and everything. But I just, you know, like all my friends, especially over here, musicians, performers and everything that, that felt it, it was just, uh, just a level of like, oh my God, who would have thought something like this could happen? That yeah. thing just, just loomed over, but now it's coming back slowly like, are you guys at full capacity or are they, what are they well, handling it? We just started rehearsals this week and all I did this week for four days would put, was put new, uh, help put, uh, play rehearsal piano and teach two new people parts mm. to go into the show. Okay. So I haven't been with the full cast yet. That's happening tomorrow. Oh, and tomorrow okay. we're doing full uh, cast, but we're even not doing rehearsal tomorrow. The first two days are dedicated to diversity training because that's also a big thing coming back to Broadway. People want that to change. Oh, uh, very good. Yeah, after the whole George Floyd murder thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wanna, it, it's got to be, um, you know, nationwide. It can't just, you know, can't just got be something that happens. And it's got to come from the top down in in right. theater too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's just. Um, it's incredible um, what a slow process it is to get back to uh, you know what we know. It's yep. like everything is in these tiny little incremental stages to see how it goes. I mean, we've been to, my we, we've been doing split level living because my wife tested positive. You know, wow. When back. was this re recently? Yeah, yeah. This is our uh, our eleventh day of the upside, <laughs> the upstairs downstairs living, but. Um, you know, she was fully, fully back. So her symptoms were mild, you know, like a little sniffle cold here. Um, and then just gone in like two, three days, but just to be on the safe side, you know, cause that's the hard thing. Like, how did she know to, t to test it? <clears throat> she had traveled a little bit. Okay. okay. Yeah. She had taken a train over to uh, Manchester, Blackpool, Leeds. Right. And yeah, then, yeah. Uh, but she was testing like every two days while she was there you know and traveling just just to to know 
Um, and then she got home and the next day, you know, she tested the negative the whole trip and then gets home in the next day, you know, positive. So yep, shoved her immediately in the upstairs guest room and uh, Lysol wipe clean, you know, masks when we, mask mandate for the downstairs. That was mask mandate when you're downstairs. But um, I, I tested negative the whole time. So I, I guess we handled it in the safest way possible, but it's just yeah. weird that this is like the new norm. You we're know. testing every 72 hours we have to we have a person we have nurses on site every 72 hours at um and we get tested and this is gets. this is for every production that that's 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 coming up isn't it or i yeah and all yeah. everybody in the audience has to show their vaccination cards oh great. there's, there's going to be nobody in the audiences that is not vaccinated good yeah i'm all i i think i honestly i i am i can't believe what's happening over there because people just refuse like it's just right. it's just just going to take forever to get it under control and they're just not convincible it's like i you know i still um i, I will still waste my breath and preach <laughs> you know <laughs> you got to do it you got to do it but i know that it's not getting through and that's that's just sucky i know i had to come to another point with it because what, some of my closest friends aren't getting vaccinated so first i got like hostile yeah yeah, I rate. Yeah, I don't get and it. And then I just thought, I don't know if I can throw my really good friends out. The, the you yeah, know, you I know, just, the thing of it is, is that you just have to keep them at arm's length. That's it. Like, I'm sorry, but can't hug you. Nope, can't come over. No, nope, you know, and it doesn't. It's just, it just doesn't seem to uh, to get through. It's it's really really difficult, especially because you think like, in your industry, like I said, hit so hard. You know, right in the pockets. You know, right in the pockets. And you would think that the people who love you and care about you would want to get this thing under control. Not to mention that New York was the first hot spot. You know, everybody saw what New York went through. And yet they can't be convinced. It's really, really strange. I, you know, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a hard subject to talk about because I it do is. understand people's fear with something not being FDA approved and putting it into your body. But I, I, we personally had friends that died. Yeah. So that's different when you have people very close to you die. It's, it's so true. It's so true. We had my mom's, um, my mother's head that still lives in Florida and she's had the same um, home health care aid that comes a couple of times a week. Same one, right. for like 13 years. She's like part of the family, you know, she's like my Jamaican, my half Jamaican black sister, whatever. I just, she is what she is. And she's amazing and adorable. And she loves my mom, like nobody's business. And I couldn't ask for a better person to be around my mother all the time, but she um, got vaccinated. And then four days later, got the virus. Two days after that was in the hospital. Day after that, ICU. Two days after that, a ventilator for five weeks and came through and she's finally like got stamina and up and about and able to work and how better. old how old oh like 40s late 40s wow. yeah it's so scary and when somebody when you know when it affects you like that and then you got people that are preaching about not doing it like that's just the stuff that I know people, we had friends that died a week apart oh. and they, hus husband and wife a week apart and we, he kept posting about her. She's doing better. She's doing better. And then all of a sudden he went down. And yeah. I, I, I mean, oh my God. It's, yeah, it's hard. It's why I, I guess it's just stuff like that, that I don't understand why it doesn't affect them the way it affects us. You know, it's, 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 it's a tough one. It really is. I had to like convince my cousin was deathly afraid to get it, deathly afraid. And, and I said, you know, like finally she made the appointment and then she, and then we were texting at what, would be their, her 5 a.m. She's like, I can't sleep. I'm already up. I'm so nervous about doing this. I can't, I don't know if I should cancel. I said, first of all, what are you scared of? A hundred million people have it. Tell me exactly what you're scared of. She goes, because everything weird happens to me. I'm like, I don't even get that. She's like some weird side effect thing that won't happen to anybody else. It'll happen to me. I'm like, oh, stop it. You know, so I finally like, you know, got her to go. And then I checked in like every other, like, are you all right? How you feeling? You okay? totally fine. But the thing was, was that she had tickets to go to a football game. She had tickets to go to a college football game. She had tickets to go to Kenny Chesney. And I'm like, you're going to be around so many people. You should want to 
protect yourself, you know, and everybody around you. Like, this is just ridiculous. You, get, you just got to do it. So I was and like so proud. I pushed one person into it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's ridiculous. It, it really is. But, you know, like these are the things I want to be able to go back and, you know, go to the West End and see shows. You know, I want to be able to be around people. So I'm going to do what I need to do. You know, I can't, right. I can't not be with it anymore, especially that it's all coming back. It's one thing when nothing's yeah. going on, you're not missing nothing. It's all coming back now. All you know, like back. I can't, I can't wait to, uh, you know, to go into London. We live like outside of London. I can't wait to get like back into the action and, and get into the West End's got a feel. I'm sh- I, I'm sure you, you know, but it's got to yeah. feel like nothing else. You know, it's just like, crazy buzzy and it's fantastic yeah and there's a lot you know there's a lot going on like I just don't uh I want to be a part of it and I think yeah you know I mean you you want people to come and yeah I, I'm 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 glad people are asking for vaccination cards like I really am yeah I, and we'll see we'll see what kind of audiences we get I mean I'm very curious uh it's we're sold out again you know everybody's that's fantastic see. so we'll that's see good. And do you guys have an opening date for, for Radiant Pink? Yeah, October 8th. Oh, no, no, no. Are you talking about, I thought you were talking about Tina. Yes, uh, Radiant Baby is going to be June of 2022, this coming June. Oh, fantastic. Uh, and uh, Tina is opening on October 8th. Well, that's exciting. That's like, right yeah. around, that's seriously right around the corner. I know. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna pack them in. Like, I mean, think about it. Tina's had a year, man. Like, Tina's had a big year. Like the, between the book and the documentary, it's just, it, you know, it's, people are curious. Like I, I can't wait. And, and again, everybody knows that music. Like, yeah. And that in that documentary, they showed the opening night when Oprah was there and, you know, and it was yep. pretty, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am, I'm so happy for you. Like you're like, you're so busy when I got, <laughs> when I got that email from you and you told me about Radiant Baby, I'm like, Jesus, we got to figure out a date because I just knew that you were just going to keep getting busier and busier and busier now that things are happening. And that's, and that's great. I mean, that's just, it's, you know, there's nothing like being able to do what you love to do. And I, and I'm sure it was a journey for you to get to that point. Yeah. I mean, I've always been a singer songwriter kind of a person. And so I always, I always wrote. So even if I wasn't working or being commissioned or didn't have an agent yet as a composer, you just write because you write all the time, you know, you just, you? Yeah. for myself as a singer songwriter, right. you know, and, and then when I started writing theater, I had to write for other characters, which my first show, I think I wrote when I was 25 or something like that, but oh my God. That's yeah, I've been, I know. That's I've been, oh, but I started writing singer songwriter songs from the time I was 13. I got my first song published when I was like 16. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh my God. It's one that's of those in things. you. That's like something that's in you. That's amazing. But I always knew what I wanted to do, always. How, tell me the difference, I guess. Um, like you just said, like I had to write for characters. It's different. Um, you know, uh, the first script I was given that I actually set lyrics to music was in back in, in the early 80s. Um, and this woman who, who was a TV writer had wrote this musical called Sophie about the life of Sophie Tucker. Oh. Who was, yeah, amazing. And and was looking for a composer and my friend recommended me, but I'd never written a musical. And I read the script and the lyrics were there. She's one of those writers that writes the the dialogue, which is called the book of the musical. And then wrote the um, lyrics and I just started setting them to music and it it was the most natural thing ever. (laughs) Really? Very weird. And and that (laughs) first show got got, uh, produced immediately. In, in 1985 or six uh, at, a, at the Jewish Repertory Theater in New York off Broadway. And I, I, I just loved it. And I loved writing for characters because you, you really can write in different keys. Like I was always writing the same key for me because I knew where I could sing. Oh, but yeah. this was like writing differently for different characters' voices and thinking differently that way. And it, yeah. yeah, I had always been in shows as an actress and a singer and stuff, but I'd never written musicals until until that time. And then I just really loved it <laughs> that is that's crazy like that's that i know, you, it's know weird. When, you know when something uh comes easy that it's meant to be you know not easy you know not 
No, but you're right. You're but right. It, it, it's meant to be there that there the struggle, you know, is gone and you can just focus and it and it flows. It's meant to be. Right. And also whenever I had in the past gone to publishers to try to get a publishing deal, like in pop music, when the, that was a thing, you know, in the seventies and eighties, they'd yeah. always say, you'd be such a good theater writer. They always said that. Isn't that and I, I said, but I want to be a pop writer. You know, I want to be on the radio. Now there's like no such thing as, I mean, there is, but everybody. Right. Who knew? <laughs> you know. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, I download more uh, Broadway uh, songs on my uh, on my phone than I just you know than I do regular music anymore you know because it takes you back to the day that you saw the show yeah it, it does yeah it's like I would I would much rather like I would much rather sing show tunes all the way to a destination when we're in the car you know that's than great go on. it's just funner it that's really, really funny is. it is and I'm talking about like weird one like I said Camelot like all those ones that take me back to, you know, the, the eighties or whatever, when I was in theater, I'll still do, I wonder what the King is up to tonight, you know, and <laughs> sing Richard Burton's part in the car. <laughs> That's it's funny. Great, though. But I think the thing that I love the most, like, especially about the Tina show too, is that, you know, with Jersey boys, you already know, you know, most of the, the, the history, the story, you know, and you can, you can really just enjoy it in the music you know it's just something that it's um it's just familiar it's a familiar thing and it's uh you know there's nothing quite like it you know there really isn't yeah and you I mean, and you, you you know teaching especially like because for with radiant baby like you said you can tweak it but right now you're in the teaching stages where you're teaching new people right well the music the music director thank god because it's <laughs> i used to be music directing my own shows it's not a good idea That's but hard. we hired this great music director who actually 18 years ago when we did the show was the piano player for the show and the copy i thought i saw that on your instagram so i was it was amazing <laughs> that he came back and now he's billy porter's music director uh billy porter was in radiant baby the first time around the first time around yes and look at him sword yeah yeah, that's just, I mean, he is everything in Pose. He is everything. Yeah, he really what is. What an amazing voice he has. Just, it, it's incredible. You know, and um, I just think it's, a, it's, it's one, you know, so you got your music director, but you're, you know, it's so hard to teach somebody what you want them to do. I know. And that's why I needed to get somebody that understood the genre because New York in the 80s, that kind of um, club scene, and I want it to be authentic. You know, I didn't want it to be like a theater version of it. Like it had, and you know, a lot of that stuff when you went into clubs, well, it was like, boom, 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 oh, boom, when you walk yeah. in a club. Yeah. And like when you're sitting in your seat in a the theater, that's not necessarily, you want to get up, you know, so, yeah. and you're inundated, but you can't dance. No. So you have to make it palatable for people to listen to and not just have it booming in their face. Exactly. without it being character driven too it's a, you have to walk a fine line yeah definitely yeah. and and you are like recreating that time which yeah is, which is kind of fun but it also um it's it, like you said it's difficult to uh to do that without and you know without uh, offending you know that that uh group of people that were there yeah you know, right that, and they're yeah. still alive those are of course yeah we are yeah we are <laughs> yeah and they're still alive Excellent. no i mean the artists that knew keith Harry. yeah you know, yeah. So. yeah it's it it's gonna be i'm so happy for you i'm that's that's gonna be so fun it's you know the so there's two there's it's twofold like it's great that everything's coming back and it's great to be able to go see all this stuff but now it stinks because like for a while there we were getting national theater plays for like a couple quid you know like we would just throw a donation and we yeah. were, you know, uh, two men, one, two, two men, one governor or whatever with James Corden. Yes. And, yes. And, uh, the one with Tamsin uh, Greg. And, and it was like in our home, we were watching these things that we would have gone to see, you know, so I that's going to stop. But again, you still get to go. And that's the important thing. You know, you a can, lot of people like my mother saw Hamilton, you know, the, the live yeah. the version of it. And she was like, oh, my God, it was great. Right. I mean, it's that's the really um, that's the 
you know, the downside for people that don't want to, you know, get dressed up and have a night out. You were able to right. see things that everybody was talking about <laughs> me most of the time. But I'm, um, I'm, I, you know, it seems like uh, it, it, we go so f uh, long, so far and few between the Hamiltons and yeah. the Tinas and the Donna Summers. And, you know, so I think like the next big one, like if you had to, if you had to, to guess, what would you say the next big boom will be? Like who will, who will give their story? Who will tell their story and get people to come? Uh, you mean on Broadway, like yeah. one of these ju jukebox musical things? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's- Jukebox um, musical, I like that. Well, you know there's a Michael Jackson one. Yeah, yeah, it's here. It's MJ. actually here, yeah. Yeah. yeah um there's also there's i know of some that are coming down i actually was working do you remember a band called the violent femmes yes there's actually a musical um <laughs> using their music oh cool that's coming up that's really cool um uh, mm, i don't know there's a lot of ones that i think there's like i love pink wouldn't it be great if we had a pink musical oh, uh, yes oh my god yeah yeah, oh. you know, I can see the twirling, you know. Yes. Part Cirque du Soleil, part. She has know. a lot of great stuff though in her life too about her father and her and you know. Yeah. Playing. yeah. I don't know. I'm really into Pink. Yeah. I'm yeah. also into. I still. I also think Sia would have a good. Disc. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, I was I get on your feet with uh, with Gloria Estefan. Yes. Uh, that was. Um, that was good. I saw that show on your feet. Did you? Because you kind of, there's something about you that reminds me a little bit of her. That's so funny you said that. When I used to have long curly hair, I don't know if you saw old pictures of me, but yeah. I'll send. Everyone always said you look like Gloria Stefan. And, so and when I sang, they said that, they, and I reminded them of her singing too. Really? Oh, see. Isn't that yeah. weird? That's weird. That's, it's, honestly, it was the first thing I thought of. Like the first thing I thought of when I saw your picture, I was and, and we have to, you know what, we have to take a second out to do a little shout out to Sandra Balls. For oh my God. Like you know the story of Sandra and me, right? No, you, I do not. You, I oh just, my God. She just said, Sandra. Talk to my, my friend. Okay. Sandra, Sandra Balls. The, she was the backup singer in my band <laughs> in the uh -huh. early 90s. There you and go. she was so good and so she, talented. And then I, I introduced her to my Dyke sister and they fell in love and she moved in with my sister I think they lived together five years oh that's amazing but that's why Sandra and <laughs> I are very very good friends because she was my sister-in-law for a little bit she of time was literally your sister-in-law that's hysterical yeah yes. she's got an amazing voice too that I was blown away by because I didn't see it coming went to a comedy show and she belted out like an Aretha song and everybody just kind of went yeah, no, she's an incredible singer, yeah. and she's and she's and my sister was the one that she talks about sometimes in her act that she says, and then my girlfriend broke up with me and said, you should become a comedian. You're really funny. It was because <laughs> of my sister that she went into comedy. <laughs> she is. She's yeah. She's she's definitely got. She's layered. She's layered. And it's very yeah. rare to be able to be funny and to have a great voice. Right. You either are a great singer and you're not funny. Yeah. <laughs> or you have a great voice I mean or you're really funny and you can't sing you can't know? sing exactly it's yeah that's why I think it just kind of like we were on a, a cruise together and she was you know you know doing we went to go see her in the stand-up lounge and that just I mean everybody really their jaws just went yeah like we just didn't we didn't know it was a thing we didn't know it was a thing she did and so, I'm so happy that she actually puts it into her act now yeah yeah, like don't hide that. Don't hide that. Oh no, no, that's no, like no, no. Weapon. That's that's fantastic, you know. So yeah, it is. It's you know, and I think about that too. Like when you um are you know, when the, when a, a show is getting cast or whatever, and you see something in someone, you know, isn't that like a, a moment where you go, they're gonna have a long career, like they're yes. gonna have a storied, long, special career. And I'm sure you've worked with like a lot of people you know, where, yeah. you, you know, like there's, I mean, I remember the, the first time I saw Audra, um, Audra McDonald. McDonald. Yeah. And I just went, wow. You know, like that's, 
that's some, some voice, that's a boomer, you know, <laughs> that's a boomer, that's amazing. It's gotta be so cool to see people on their way up, people on their way down, you yeah. know, you're working with quite, um, you know, a, a huge range because that's the thing about Broadway is everybody gets a, you know, you get your shot eventually, you know, you yeah. work hard enough and you get your shot. And that's, yeah. that's the coolest thing ever. Did you find like, did you find it was, it was hard to break through? like to get people to take you seriously or to get an agent to get one? Uh, oh, um, well, I did these one woman shows uh, way back when I, I, I fin I was in Tony and Tina's wedding. Tony and Tina's wedding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so after Tony and Tina's wedding, I, um, I decided that the show was closing and I thought, you know what? I want to put together my own show. So I, I, and I invited, um, agents to this show it was kind of like a showcase for me because it showed me playing piano that I could write I could be funny I could um tell the story of my life write songs about it and that's how I got my agent my first agent oh fantastic. came to that show yeah and, and saw what I could do so it's kind of like I I made a showcase for myself right and then um as time went on I just uh I wrote another one that the first show was called go to your womb and it was about my relationship <laughs> with my mother. And then the really? second show I wrote was called A Womb with a View, which is about me trying to have a baby with Kim. <laughs> oh my God. And it was a really funny show. And it was right when people were, you know, shopping for sperm online for the first time. And, you know, we were, <laughs> yeah. it was really funny. You know? Yeah. So, oh my God. Yeah. So that's kind of how I did it. I did it you know, I got an agent first as a composer and a music director. And then just one thing led to the other. And for 12 years during that time, one or two days a week, I was teaching in a private school theater to kids. So I learned a lot during that time too. I was in Brooklyn and I was at a private school in Park Slope. And uh, I would, I started a theater department for kids where we wrote these irreverent um, fourth grade musicals, me and my friend Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> like the hair, the hair and the tortoise after they raced you know the 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 uh they the tortoise like ruined uh, i mean the rabbits all uh went to court with because the, the <laughs> because the rabbits got their reputation ruined by losing to a tortoise <laughs> so they, now i'm thinking about it, it was really funny and so they went <laughs> You know, they went to court to sue the rabbit that raced against. Anyway, we did oh, these God. reverent musicals. Like we didn't do musicals that condescended to kids. Yeah. yeah. Like well, I'm going to the store now. Do you want? No, it was it was like order in the court. You know, all rabbits can <laughs> see. <laughs> like, yeah. That's so funny. That's great. What a way to hone it. You know, with a little with little experimental fourth graders. That's fantastic. Yes, and then. I got my second agent that way because my agent had one of her kids in the show and said, uh, my kid is so excited. He's never been into, he's been into sports, never into theater. What are you doing with these kids? I said, I'm writing these irreverent musicals where things are coming out of their mouth that are adult jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is insane. We have to sell these musicals. And that's how that happened. It was weird. That's, I mean, and look at like cartoons now are made more for adults than they are for kids. So you were like well ahead of your time. Yeah, you have to really be, you have to always be creating. You never know where anything's going to end up. Right. If yeah. you're a creator of any sort, you know. Exactly, exactly. You can't let your wheels get rusty. That's the, that's the thing, you know. Yeah. It's true. That's how I feel about life. And I was out at school too. There's a part of that. Um, you were, out. what? Say that again? I was out in the 90s at school and that was oh, not done. No, no, I can't even imagine. And you were in in the in the secret pocket in the uh, in the sweet spot in Park Park Slope. Park right? Slope. <laughs> and I, yeah, I even wrote a song called Park Slope Dykes, uh, which was it was very funny. It was uh, in a, my that's right there. And, and it tells the story about um, me coming out into my fourth grade theater class and how I did it and how I made a paper trail and wrote to the principal and told him what happened. And, a paper trail. Oh my God, that's a, a, look at that. That's so funny. That's, that's, Jesus, I, <laughs> when you look back, like how funny is that stuff? Like, that's great though. In the nineties yeah. when no one was really doing it, you know, nobody was like, I mean, people were cuspy, you know, like I, I think I came out in like the late nineties, like 1998, 1999 to my husband. I came out to my husband. 
<laughs> and uh, got that squared away. But yeah, I think like nobody was, nobody was, um, you know, everybody, I, it's like, it was just an underground thing. You know, you had your friends, yeah, you had your bars, just... you had your clubs. Exactly. And New York had a lot of gay bars back then. So it was okay. easy, like, you know, to like walk in there, especially if you didn't want, know what you were and you just wanted to see what it, the scene was like. Yeah. It was, a little, you know what I mean? So it was like, it was different. I did have an insane fear of coming out as a performer. When I was in a place where I wanted to be a performer, I just thought this is because, you know, we all knew Whitney was gay. And yeah. And, it was very sad but the, the thing is you know i i don't know i lost so many friends in the in the aids epidemic too yeah yeah that's hard we just we just had that um that bbc series it's a sin uh i think uh -oh. it made its way over to uh to cable. Oh, really because i gotta see that no i haven't seen oh that. it was so good it was so oh. good it was one of those ones that that uh that sticks with you you know yeah oh hi now my cat comes down sniffing around for food well this whole time my dog if you can see has been oh, laying good on. how good yeah <laughs> hasn't made a peep <laughs> that's perfect lizzo place my wonderful housewife and i use that term you know why i use housewife yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the age of 50 kim finally comes out to me as a non-binary trans masculine and and says this is what i am there were never words for it that's what we have the that's younger generation is. there were never words for it there were never words for it so i just thought i was married to a butch dyke that right. was and i was happy with that and then all of a sudden this coming out was so great because for me i was like oh i can get to know my partner deeper this is amazing after 18 years of being with a person they come out as this other uh thing and you're you're able to go wow this identity is really what you feel and let and i was shocked at how many people left their partners when really they, yeah yes Be especially women who were married to men that's and the men were trans feminine and they wanted to be women oh yeah okay and uh they didn't want to be looked at as lesbians excuse me it's not about you it's not it's about the person. <laughs> exactly. The person that you love. But I don't mean to make light of it because no. I do understand. It's I do understand. But I always try to find the humor in everything, you know. That's how you got you. I mean, you kind of have to get through stuff like that, you know, like we my my mother has MS and we we tease her all the time. And, you know, you're not special. Other people have it, you know, that kind of thing. But you have to you have to keep people their spirits up I, I think humor really is the sixth sense i'm yeah. serious that's why it's on my instagram thing it's because it's, it's a, true yeah it's a sense it's a sense of humor it, it's it you have to develop it is. yeah yeah most definitely is and then you know the thing like you said is that now that there's there's words for it i just i think like i don't understand how anybody can feel upset by it because how often like, do you feel a feeling and you can't put words to it and you just let it go or you ignore it and you forget about it and you don't, you know, but, but when there's a breakthrough like that, you know, and you can attach your feeling to an actual. Right. Actual that is, word, that is, like, is, that should be yeah. celebrated on every level, every level. And oh. I, I, I just love the, the whole non-binary thing, which is what, uh, and, and the fact that everybody's different in wanting what their pronouns should be. Like Kim does not want they, them, because for, for Kim, it feels like it splits her in half. So she said, can you just alternate pronouns with me? Sometimes call me she, sometimes call me he. I don't really care. It's more about how people it's a mood. see me. Yeah, yeah. It's a mood, right? So I the fluidity, feel... the fluidity of that is a revelation to me. A revelation. I 100% agree. 100% yep. agree. It is, yeah. you know, and I keep thinking to myself, like, I'm glad I'm here to learn about this kind of thing, because like, I think, you know, in the, in the late nineties and in the early two thousands, we were just happy to be out and be able to say, I'm a dyke, I'm a lesbian, I'm a queer, you know, whatever. And now this, you know, this up and coming generation analyzes everything so much, you know, and yeah. they're pinpointing the things that we just breezed by right you know because because we were okay with like one word you know one, one word we were okay with that so yeah you gotta you gotta 
commend. And I do love the word queer now because you see, I don't want to identify as a lesbian anymore because yes, it is in relation to this person who I love, who's on the gender spectrum, you know? And so I feel like queer is a really good word now. Yeah, it's more all encompassing, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it does, it's it's kind of like, the thing I like about, uh, of it is it does feel like it's pretty much a vast inclusion, you know? Like we could say that and I think everybody gets it, you know? I agree, I agree. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Yep. I'm so, I'm, you know what? I am so thrilled that we have covered so many different things and I don't want to take up your whole Labor Day. So I'm going to let you go, but I want to say thank you. And I want to thank Sandra for, for hooking us up. And I want to say that as soon as I'm able to travel again, <laughs> I cannot wait. I've never been to New York city and I grew up in Buffalo. I grew up in- Oh Nashville. my God. I'm from Syracuse. Shut up. I am. Shut up the front door. <laughs> I'm from Syracuse and I went to school in in Rochester. Rochester. Yes. Oh my God. So if you do hear any accent, that's the accent. (laughs) It's so true. I grew up in Niagara Falls and I have to say, you know, I always have to specify on the New York side, but I'll tell you the last like six years or so over here, when people go, oh, are you American? I had to say I'm Canadian because I didn't want to be associated with the Trump thing. So, so you said Niagara Falls. I said Niagara yeah. Falls. I wasn't lying. I said Niagara Falls. And then they would say, oh, okay. And, I, and then, or they would just say like, oh, you're American. And I'd be like, no, Canadian, Canadian. Cause I just didn't want to be, I didn't want to hear. Boy, it must've been terrible. To oh, me. the ribbing and the, and the, you know, the embarrassment, just the sheer embarrassment. So like now, now I can go back to saying I'm from Niagara Falls. So you can work over there. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I worked in a pub for a little bit, which was, um, that was great. That was fantastic. I mean, there were so many times where I didn't understand what people were saying because of, because of their dialects or their accents or whatever. And I would, you know, by the third time I went, what? I would just move aside and say, just point to the bottle, just point, you know, point to what you want. And then they would point and I'd be like, oh, Amaretto. They were saying like De Serrano and I didn't understand what oh. they were talking about. And it was just Amaretto. And I was like, we don't, Okay. So, so it was a learning experience, like the yeah. difference between ales and lagers and stouts and porters and all that. It was great because it was all stuff I was interested in. It was like getting an education and getting paid, you know, so it was fun. And, um, and then it got sold <laughs> and now it's just sitting there empty because it got sold to some like corporation and it's not, and it was 50 steps from my front door. It was like the best job. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't ask for it. So I'm just going to, I'm, I'm hanging in there and I'm hoping like somebody either rents it um, and opens up a new pub and I can get back in there because it was just amazing that I, I lived here for so long and I didn't know anybody in my neighborhood or anything. And, and that, then, then you did. Yeah. Then you <laughs> work in a pub, you get to know way too much about the people in your neighborhood. <laughs> That's right. All right. Come on, get down. There What's is. your cat's name? The little one is Molly. She's our oh, I love it. She's only two. And then we've got Bruce, who we lovingly refer to as Big Head Bruce because he's a Mancoon and he's huge. Yeah. Like the kind that he climbs on you and it crushes you, it's bone crushing. He's so big and heavy. Um, but he's also like a gentle giant. So he's been really good about the little one being hyper and all over. She treats him like a big brother. Like she jumps on him and she wrestles with him. And, right. you know, he just gives her a swat when he's done. So, so they're, you know, she's, she's still got that kitten in her. That's um, exhausting to say the least. <laughs> I love it. It's funny. Well, I'm really glad we got a chance to talk because I, I'm going to go back and tell Sandra that this was really Oh fun. yeah, man. Give her a, give her a high five, a big smooch, a, a, a hand slap, a pinch. Um, and like I said, man, the minute we can travel, I would love to come and see all the great things that you're doing. Yeah, just remember June is going to be Radiant Baby. So if you're in, if you do come next summer or whatever, things are more calm. Yeah, yeah, That'd definitely gonna. It's like I keep saying, just kind of let things cool off a little bit, and and then we'll see how we go. But yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do it because like I've never been there, and I've always had the layover. You know, like especially when I lived in Florida, and I'd want to go back home from to Buffalo, I would lay over at yeah. JFK, sit there for two hours, and never left the airport you know right so now i i want to you know i, I definitely want to get 
get there and 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 see things and do things and not long like i think a weekend i think a weekend yeah (laughs) Yeah, a weekend you could see a lot of shows in a weekend yeah and i'm all about that i'm ready for it i'm so ready for it well listen go grow some burgers and um you know thank you so much for taking time out on labor day i appreciate it yeah this is good this is my last day off and i go full into everything right so yeah this has been a really good break for me thank you good okay listen have a great time and good luck with everything all right thank you you're welcome take care honey bye Uh he drank way too much whiskey like never stop chasing your dreams